I once overheard two botanists arguing over a damned thing that had blasphemously sprouted in a college yard. One claimed that the damned thing was a tree, and the other claimed that it was a shrub. They each had good scholarly arguments, and they were still debating when I left them. The world is forever spawning damned things, things that are neither tree nor shrub, fish nor fowl, black nor white, and the categorical thinker can only regard the spiky and buzzing world of sensory fact as a profound insult to his card index system of classifications. Worst of all are the facts which violate common sense, that dreary bog of sullen prejudice and muddy inertia. The whole history of science is the odyssey of a pixelated card indexer perpetually sailing between such damned things and desperately juggling his classifications to fit them in, just as the history of politics is the futile epic of a long series of attempts to line up the damned things and cajole them to march in regiment. Every ideology is a mental murder, a reduction of dynamic living processes to static classifications, and every classification is a damnation, just as every inclusion is an exclusion. In a busy buzzing universe, where no two snowflakes are identical, and no two trees are identical, and no two people are identical, and indeed the smallest subatomic particle, we are assured, is not even identical with itself from one microsecond to the next, every card index system is a self-delusion. Or to put it more charitably, as Nietzsche says, we are all better artists than we realise. It is easy to see that the label Jew was a damnation in Nazi Germany, but actually the label Jew is a damnation anywhere, even where anti-Semitism does not exist. He is a Jew, he is a doctor, and he is a poet, mean to the card-indexing centre of the cortex, that my experience with him will be like my experience with other Jews, other doctors and other poets. Thus, individuality is ignored when identity is asserted. At a party or any place where strangers meet, watch this mechanism in action. Behind the friendly overtures, there is wariness as each person fishes for the label that will identify and damn the other. Finally, it is revealed, oh, he's an advertising copywriter. Oh, he's an engine lathe operator. Both parties relax. For now they know how to behave, what roles to play in the game. 99% of each has been damned. The other is reacting to the 1% that has been labelled by the card index machine. Certain damnations are socially and intellectually necessary, of course. A custard pie thrown in a comedian's face is damned by the physicist who analyses it according to the Newtonian laws of motion. These equations tell us all we want to know about the impact of the pie on the face, but nothing about the human meaning of the pie throwing. A cultural anthropologist analysing the social function of the comedian as shaman, court jester and king surrogate explains the pie throwing as a survival of the feast of fools and the killing of the king's double. This damns the subject in another way. A psychoanalyst, finding an Oedipal castration ritual here, has performed a third damnation, and the Marxist, seeing an outlet for the workers' repressed rage against the bosses, performs a fourth. Each damnation has its values and its uses, but it is nonetheless a damnation, unless its partial and arbitrary nature is recognised. The poet, who compares the pie in the comedian's face with the decline of the West or his own lost love, commits a fifth damnation. But in this case, the game element and whimsicality of the symbolism are safely obvious. At least one would hope so. Reading the new critics occasionally raises doubts on this point. 